Hey there, it's Brie Bear, and today I'm going to be talking about goals. So, goals are something that we all tend to set beginning the new year, right? But we set these resolutions and goals without much plan and without much knowledge of how to best set a goal. So today we're going to be talking about how to set the best goals and actually accomplish those goals. So let's get started. The first thing you need to know is that you need to set SMART goals. SMART goals are goals that are specific, meaning that they're not ambiguous at all. An example of an ambiguous goal would be, I want to be healthier. Be a bit more specific. What about your health needs to be improved? A SMART goal is secondly, measurable. A measurable goal is one that has an amount attached to it or a number attached to it in some way that can tell you if you've achieved that goal or not. Saying I want to lose weight versus saying I want to lose 20 pounds. Thirdly, a SMART goal is achievable, meaning it's something that you can actually accomplish. Saying that you want to lose 100 pounds when you're only 120 pounds is obviously not achievable. Fourthly, a SMART goal is realistic. The difference, in my opinion, of achievable and realistic is achievable meaning something that you can actually accomplish at all. Realistic means something that you can accomplish and that you will accomplish, something that you will actually put forth the effort to do. So if you're saying that you want to work out every day, that might not be realistic. It's something you could do eventually. But if you're not working out at all, then it's not realistic to say, I'm gonna work out every single day. The fifth thing is that a SMART goal is timed. So I'm gonna take one goal and take it through each of the SMART goal steps um, to create a more specified, timed out, perfected goal, to, just to show you how you can use this system to take your goals and kind of amplify them enough to where they're actually something that will help you. Let's start with this. Joe Bob wants to be healthier. To make that more specific, Joe Bob wants to lose weight. To make it measurable, Joe Bob wants to lose 100 pounds. To make it achievable, Joe Bob wants to lose 50 pounds. To make it realistic, Joe Bob wants to lose 20 pounds. To make it timed, Joe Bob wants to lose 20 pounds in six months. So one of the things I want to note about that specific order is it's not exactly how I would recommend looking at your goals. I even think that the goal Joe Bob wants to lose 20 pounds in six months is still too ambiguous. Why? Because there are not action steps attached to it. That is an overall goal. You need to have two to three supplementary goals that actually lead you to that overall goal. I think that a goal also needs to be actionable. And those supplementary goals are what you're going to focus on each day. An example of the supplementary goals would be to work out four to five times a week, to drink 100 ounces of water a day, to complete a whole 60. So once you have SMART goals set up that take overarching goals and have them broken down into supplementary actionable goals that you can work on each and every day, you need to start tracking. If you don't know how you're doing on your goals, then you won't be able to achieve them. Well, let's talk about how to track. The main one that I would recommend that I love and that is the bullet journal. Doing bullet journaling is amazing for a huge number of areas in your life and honestly your entire life. It's kind of the best thing ever. But even if you're not interested in bullet journaling, you could instead try doing a goal journal where you're just doing your tracking for your goals in that journal and you're not necessarily doing a full-blown bullet journal where you're just tracking all of your goals together. Or you could even break that up if you have so many different things that you want to track within that. You could break it up to where you have a health and fitness goal journal or a whatever goal journal and have that broken up into separate journals for that if you want to do that, which you could also do in a traveler's notebook, by the way good idea right there that you can just put them all in separate notebooks and then put the, all the notebooks in the cover so they're all together and that's your goal journal but it's divided into separate notebooks which could be pretty helpful. Another option is to use apps like um, my fitness pal or you know even just the activity tracker that comes on the Apple watch or whatever app that works best for you. Here's where a lot of people fail epically. Even if they are tracking their goals, they're not reviewing. Reviewing is an extremely important element to having a good goal. 
if you don't sit down and see how you're doing and seeing what didn't work, then you aren't going to be able to improve so that you can further reach your goal. How you're doing and what didn't work. If you're answering those two questions, then you will be able to do this next thing, which is to adjust. There are two types of adjustments you can make. You can adjust how you're approaching your goal and you can adjust the goal itself. An example would be if you're not losing nearly as much weight as you would like to and as you would need to to actually accomplish your goals. Say you want to lose that 20 pounds, you're halfway through and you've only lost five. Okay, well you're going a lot slower than you need to. So let's make some adjustments. Supplementary goals were to drink 100 ounces of water a day and to work out four to five times a week and to do a whole 60. But let's say he keeps putting off his whole 60 and he has been doing his water intake, so that's good. So far, the working out thing just hasn't been working out. First of all, Joe Bob needs to stop procrastinating on his whole 60 and actually ad and adjust his approach to achieving that goal. Joe Bob hates going to the gym, but he has been doing a little bit of walking here and there and he kind of has been, been enjoying it. So Joe Bob decides that he's going to adjust his goal to go to the gym three times a week and walk every day. Another thing he can do is he can increase his water intake as needed. Say maybe he still has enough room and flexibility throughout his day to drink some soda and so instead he's going to increase his water intake so he has less opportunity to drink soda. So. By looking at that, you can see how many infinite ways there are to change your goals or your approach to your goals so that you can achieve that overarching goal. Here's the other thing. The overarching goal did not change. Joe Bob still wants to lose 20 pounds, but he had changed how he's reaching that. Obviously, sometimes that is going to have to change. If you have a serious injury, then that overarching goal is going to have to change. You know, if you break a leg and you are going to be out for the count for a month, then that's going to change things a little bit. Most of the time, it's going to be the supplementary goals and the actionable goals that need changing rather than the overarching. So try to adjust those first. So in review, make smart goals with overarching and actionable supplementary goals. Track your progress review that progress, and adjust your goals. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you to approach this new year in a new way with regards to the goals that you make and set, and with regards to the way that you approach your goals all throughout the year. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Peace out, Bear Scouts. I mean a bear necessities, that's why a bear can rest at ease with just the bare necessities of life. Yeah, with just the bare necessities of life.